All right, welcome back to the beautiful Pacific Northwest land of Platt and Coffee and Pack West Bigfoot. This is David, and by the way, Cynthia, I have your stuff. You will get an email from me, so if you're the Cynthia that didn't get an email from me, <laughs> then no worries. <clears throat> you are the winner, and I've got something for you in the mail. So, let's dive right into this, and I did want to uh, real quick let you guys know that um, going forward, starting in August, I'm going to try to, if I can, if I can get everything done that I'm trying to get done right now, go back to the um, weekly uh, encounter stories. I've got a ton of um, emails from a lot of you guys out there that would like me to turn your reports and <clears throat> incidents into these campfire like stories so um, I promise I will get to those um, as I can I mean there's nearly another uh, 60 or 70 of them uh, I didn't you know I try to count some of them but uh, <laughs> it's not that I can't count that high okay <laughs> it's just yeah anyways I'm gonna see what I can do about getting those out there this summer and through the fall so all right let's get with this run off by a Bigfoot the mountain devil of Diablo Lake <sighs> yes I was run off by a Bigfoot or in two and it was a mountain devil if you will and up near Diablo Lake not five years ago I guess I know now why they named the place Diablo Lake and I know why I'll never hike fish camp or even drive by that place anymore there is or was a Bigfoot running around up there and it was not a very curious or benign creature either. Here's what I saw and what happened to me. The Bigfoot of Lake Diablo. <clears throat> I am not the environmentalist per se, but I do love the outdoors and doing some hiking, camping, and going on the occasional fishing or hunting trip. It was late summer when I would head up to the Diablo, uh, Diablo Lake in the state of Washington. I am an Idaho native. Boise to be exact, but I love Washington, and get there as often as possible for hiking and other out outdoor activities. It is the forest, I suppose, where I'm from is a little, well, you know, barren in the southern part. Yeah, that lower half. <clears throat> but it would be Diablo Lake where I would head out for a few nights of camping, fishing, and some hiking. What I was not looking forward to or thinking about was being rushed and knocked over literally by one of several Bigfoot. Cleelum, your story got me. <clears throat> I read and listened to your account from the person in Cleelum, Washington, Dave. It was scary, just nuts, but I have to say, I know what it was like. By the way, <clears throat> let the people that complain about your <clears throat> clearing <laughs> your throat and coffee sipping go. Keep up our encounter stories here. I love it. Thank you. But, at the same time, the based on true stories freak me out, and I have just reason for that. See, as I will share with you, I was literally knocked down by one of these things. And just so you know, I swear there was more than one, and I'm sure of it. I'm not a researcher, nor will I ever be. These things should be left alone. I know, I know. There are some that may be benign, I suppose. I don't doubt, any, doubt anyone else's stories, now that I know these things are real. But the ones I ran into were not benign. They were just the opposite. Aggressive, dangerous. And I thought for a few moments there I was going to die. I saw, I only saw one. Well, two, but up and close. I heard the other. How many were there I do not know, but I can guess up to three or even four of them were present at the time. I'm not sure if I was just in the way of a hunting party or if I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time and they were just passing through. What I do know is that they were real scary. Really, really scary. Hiking past Diablo. <clears throat> so I took some time off from work. I can do that as I'm my own boss and run my own show. I own a coffee shop in the city. Not a big one, but a popular one. So I had recently, uh, so I had recently, about six months before this trip, hired a new manager, a young lady, who was extremely self-sufficient, it seemed, and had plans of her own for a coffee shop down the road. So I decided to hire her and give her the entrepreneurial experience she needed and wanted. <clears throat> it was a great decision. She turned out to be one of my best and favorite employees, to be honest. So with the shop in good hands, I thought a little extended vacation was in order, and Diablo Lake would be that destination. 
I reached the lake by evening, early evening. I planned on maybe getting some fishing in and in and plan my hike some more while camping lakeside for the first night. The plan was to follow a creek or stream up and out into the wilds of Washington for a bit, fly fishing and camping along the way for a few nights. Simply put, I just wanted to roam around a bit in the woods, so I did. That first night was quiet except for the noise and music coming from the party, some party about 50 or so yards up from my campsite. It finally died off around midnight, but it did not bother me too much. I stayed up late myself looking at a small map I picked up in the uh, of the area itself at a little store along the way here, not too far out from Diablo Lake itself. I finally turned in after deciding to follow a particular small stream or creek that actually held a trail alongside it for miles and miles into the mountains south of the campsite I was at. I fell asleep pretty fast and satisfied with my choice of direction that should be the last of good, uh, uh, and that would be the last of good sleep I would get for two days. The Mountain Devil. Morning broke, and so did I from camp. <clears throat> I headed out and down a trail with a small creek, uh, not far from where I was camped, but it still looked, uh, it still took a few to get there, and I had to round a particular channel. I made it, eventually, and headed out into the wilds of Washington, not knowing that myth and legend were there to meet me. Okay, run me down more like it. I will tell you this, Dave. Dave, I have never been so afraid of my life, and I have been in some hairy situations out in the woods here and there. I just never thought in a million years my hairiest scare ever would be literally covered in hair and not fur. It was a pretty small trail. <clears throat> I am surprised it was even marked on the map of the creek, too. <clears throat> The trail was more like a game trail, to be honest. Not much to it, and I almost lost it twice, not a mile in. The creek was running uh, that late in the season, but fishing was going to be done in large pools, not running water, as it was barely running, period. <clears throat> I thought about turning around and hitting a more popular trail and creek, but that was further away, and like I said, I was already a mile or two into my current direction. Besides, the forest was beautiful, absolutely lush, green, thick, and even foreboding in a cool, mystical kind of sense, if you know what I mean. I was into Dungeon and Dragons growing up, so the forest was rather cool to be venturing through. Call me a big kid, but I liked it, at least that first day. <clears throat> I stopped at, or about noon, to eat some lunch. I found one of many pools of water that, that were deeper than I thought and figured I would drop a fly in for a bit and eat a sandwich. Funny, because that first pool had a school of small trout that kept on taking the fly like my grandmother took to the old blue light specials at Kmart back in the day. After about an hour of that, I packed it up and hiked on seeking the perfect camping site for the first night. I found one about three hours later and a few miles in. Uh, I would have gotten farther, but the trail was pretty bad, and I had to backtrack a few times to get back on what I thought was the trail again. <clears throat> Fortunately, I know how to use a compass in my map, so I knew where I was and how far I was from Diablo Lake. I was nearly five miles out by the time I hit a really hard part of that trail that I decided I would tackle the next day. I can't believe I did not turn around that very next morning after the long, long night, but I didn't. I set up camp, found a couple nice little pools to catch some dinner in, and tried just that for about an hour to catch dinner. The sun was getting lower, and being where I was near the edge of the creek and the almost and almost under the canopy of the Pacific Northwest Forest, it was pretty dark regardless. I was fishing, fishing and watching my fire <clears throat> when I thought I heard movement directly ahead of me up the hill on the opposite side of the creek. I heard some movement all day, and it was deer for the most part, so that was my thought at the time. But after a few minutes or so, I started thinking bear. I'm not afraid of an old black bear, even grizzly. It's not so worrisome for me. But you always err on the side of caution, so I made sure my pistol was ready if needs be. <clears throat> Whatever it was was pretty heavy, although it seemed more than 50 to 75 yards away at the most. It was rather loud as it snapped limbs and brush walking through the trees and thick brush along the hillside in front of me. 
I could not see anything. It's far too thick along the hill to see 10 feet past anything. But you could definitely hear it. I gave it up to being a bear as my attention suddenly moved towards the dinner to just grab my fly. I ate dinner, gathered a bit more wood, and did not hear anything else but the deer here and there the rest of the afternoon and evening. That was, at least, <clears throat> until I decided to turn in and get some sleep. Howling and more howling. It was not even minutes after I started to drift off when I was brought back into consciousness by a howling sound from high above the creek along the ridges of the hills and mountains beyond. It was not right by camp, came wafting down from the hills, as I said, but it was both eerie and loud enough to wake me up. It was a howl, a long and lingering howl that was deep and had kind of a, well, a, a hollow-like sound to it. Whatever it was, though, sounded creepy and nothing like anything I'd heard before over the years of hiking in the wilds. Well, <laughs> I suppose there was one time out in southern Idaho, but that did not last but two short, quick howls. But they did sound pretty similar, thinking about it, in a way. I popped my head out of the tent, one of those one-person things, and completely weatherized. <clears throat> the howling eventually died off, but not before I noticed that it seemed to have moved in my direction. At that point I decided to keep the gun a bit closer to me and laid back down. Again, not an hour later, I was aroused by the howling, but this time it seemed to be coming no further than 200 or so yards from my position and over and up the hillside from the creek I was right next to. Wide awake and a bit nervous all of a sudden, I decided to get out and stoke the fire and bring it back to life for safety reasons. Whatever was howling now sounded like it might prove to be pretty large. And boy, did they. I stoked the fire and listened as the howling continued. And that is when I'd seen it. Something not 50 feet away moved from one side of the small game trail in front of me to the other. It was dark outside, but being a near full moon, and my eyes adjusted to the dark, I watched as a massive and tall shadow moved with lightning fast ease in the darkness. <clears throat> my heart was now pounding, and I decided it was time to carry that gun in hand. As soon as I grabbed that thing and turned around, I could see the glint of glowing greenish eyes staring right at me from back down the trail. They would be there. Then this thing would blink, and they would be gone, and right back again. It was blinking, and then the howling turned into a scream. It was time to make a warning shot. I looked up to make sure I was <clears throat> not firing into trees and found it was a clear sky above with only stars shining. Then I let it off. Bang! <clears throat> Screaming stopped immediately, and the eyes that were glowing disappeared into the darkness. It all went completely silent. Not even a cricket could be heard. My resolve. <clears throat> Suffice it to say, yep, I was a bit freaked out, scared a little, and even nervous the next day to a point that I was looking over my shoulder as I hiked on. But I hiked on. I did not let some weirdness stop me from time out in the woods, my enjoyment of God's green earth. I just wish he might have given me a better warning of what was out here was all, <clears throat> and maybe he did. And as I was <clears throat> just not listening, uh, maybe I was just not listening, as usual. I guess some don't until it's too late, or almost too late, but I carried on. I hiked the trail, that so-called trail, into nowhere, and soon enough, the day grew cloudy, darker, almost ominous in a way. Maybe the big guy upstairs was still trying to warm me, and quickly. I took a break to fish a bit, and while the clouds moved in and it grew dark because of it, no rain fell. It was humid, but no rain fell, not a sprinkle. I also had a sudden chill up my neck and knew I was not alone out there. Trail running. And it was true, I was not alone. The howling that turned into a scream was back, and it was wild-sounding. I know a weird description for a scream, but it sounded crazy and wild. I turned to look across the creek the best I could, and at first I did not notice anything, but after a few seconds or more, I noticed those glinting green eyes again. It was standing just inside the darkness on the opposite side of the, the creek, just staring at me, and it was swaying or something next to a large tree. I was suddenly fearful of my situation, and my heart was freaking out. I needed to calm down, but the screaming would not stop, 
and that thing just stood there, almost like it was waiting for something. I could not see it very well, but I could, could make out its shape. Even at the time, I knew I was staring at a Bigfoot, a real-life fable and story around the campfire as a kid come to life. And I knew it. They were not friendly. I just sensed the danger I was in. <clears throat> and boy, was I. Before I could catch my breath, realize all of this, this whole situation I was now in, I heard crashing right behind me. Something was running towards me. Something big. Something massive. By the time I turned around, it was too late. I found myself flying through the air, losing my backpack and my gun. Whatever it was, it ran me over, basically. Right into me, and really hard. I was down, confused, and hurt quite a bit from the collision. I caught my breath finally and stood up. A bit winded still, and my arm was killing me from the blow and the other one from hitting the ground so hard. But I stood up, finally, and ran for my gun. I found it, and my pack. I started spinning around looking for that thing that hit me like a Mack truck on a highway. We finally met eyes. She was not even 50 feet away. The screaming continued and the green eyes past her in the forest were still there. She, a nearly eight foot creature, solid brown in color with breasts and long arms that reached to her knees, stood there glaring at me. She was breathing so hard I could hear the wheezing and rapidness of it probably like my own at the time, but from a pair of lungs much larger than mine. This Bigfoot was massive, and she, st she stunk, too. I could smell her as the wind picked up a bit. It was like rotten meat and garbage. She had a slight hunch to her, and such a small neck, you could almost say it was non-existent. Almost. Her face was that of a monkey, but a nose that was more human-like, as well as her eyes. However, they were near black and seemed full of rage that I was there. Next thing you knew, I was trail running. I did not hear them chase me or come after me at all. Besides, I was running down a trail, into stuff, tripping, falling, getting back up, and running for my life, literally. With all the noise I was making, well, I would not have known if they were following me anyways. Never again, Washington State. Never again. This encounter had me truly rattled, my mind confused, I guess you could say, and for a very long time. It took me almost a couple of years in meeting my fiancé at the time, who talked to me and listened to my ordeal before I was comfortable, comfortable again with heading out into the woods. Personally, I stick to the more open places, however, and as often as possible. Thank God for Idaho. But today, I get out of the coffee shop and into the woods with my wife. But know this, it is not without a gun and an extra pair of eyeballs in the back of my head. But that is my encounter story. Thanks. River.